Hey guys, how's it going? OPV here, coming at you with a quick video. Uh, this is going to be part three in the uncommon, uncommonly talked about uh, firearms vs HTF. Um, previously, I had talked about the Mossberg MVP Patrol. Um, I had mentioned that one of my other preferred rifles is the Lee Enfield. Uh, so this video is going to be focused more on the Lee Enfield aspect of things. Uh, there is a couple of guys on YouTube that have some pretty good videos. Um, can't remember the names off the top of my head at the moment. Uh, one of the things that the reason why I have the 303 is a trigger time. I've got a lot of time on L.E. Enfield rifle. It's one of my first rifles. Uh, I learned how to shoot on the first center fire rifle I learned to shoot. Um, obviously, you started off with like 22. Um, and then went up to 303, huge jump, but uh, it's just what we had growing up. Um, so the reason why I have that, um, again, trigger time, I'm accurate with it, I'm good with it, I know that rifle inside and out. Uh, sentimental value too obviously has something to do with why you pick things right a lot of guys if they learn to shoot an old lever action 3030 or 357 44 rem mag or whatever um that's what they're gonna rock um lots of guys swear by the 12 gauge because that's what they use right uh i'll be talking about 12 gauge shotguns in another video uh 303 brit ammunition here in canada is pretty easy to find um especially if you look around a little bit um, sometimes it's hit or miss, sometimes places have it, sometimes places don't. It is a bit pricey, I think it's about 50 to $60 Canadian for 20 rounds. Um, so not something you're going to go out reasonably anyways, uh, and point targets with. Um, I try to get it out once every month, maybe twice a month, if I'm lucky. Um, send 20 to 60 rounds down range a month out of it uh, just to keep that proficiency there um, you're not going to be shooting thousands of rounds out of this thing uh, it's just not financially uh, and economically reasonable to do that uh, another reason again why I went with 223 it's a lot cheaper here you can find ammunition anywhere from 60 to a dollar a round depending on the quality and the type of ammunition sorry 60 cents to one dollar a round um so it's a lot more economical to shoot as opposed to the two or three dollars around you're going to be spending for the um 303 uh hitting power the 303 uh good range on it i fit targets out to i'd probably say 100 900 yards with it um have never shot beyond that really um everywhere I've lived it's always been that's like an extreme shot and you had to go to a range customly made for long range shooting so um but it is a heavy round it's 30 caliber um tried and true uh one of the longest serving rifles in military history is the Lee Enfield uh here in Canada they just retired it from our rangers up in the Arctic uh, I believe five six years ago now and they use a Tika uh, Chamberlain 308 uh, bolt action rifle now. Um, I know we're gonna get a lot of jokes here. Oh, why doesn't your military use semi-automatics? Well, in the Arctic, it doesn't do so well. Um, bolt action 308, uh, you gotta worry about polar bears, you gotta worry about your rifle freezing, et cetera, et cetera. So bolt action rifles are the way to go. Um, and some uh, another thing reason why i'm so fond of the lee enfield is my great grandfather carried a lee enfield um very similar to that one actually pretty much that exact same rifle but with full wood stock and all the metal hardware still on it non-sporterized obviously original rifle um and he carried that in world war one and when he got back he purchased one and it was in the family to, to this day uh, not his service rifle but anyways wish it was um, 
it's tried and true. He it, he fought World War One with it, and he started off with a Ross rifle, and then they ended up switching over to um, again Chamber of Three Three Brit. Um, then they ended up switching over to the Lee Enfield Mark Threes, our number one Mark Threes, and that's kind of what he was using. Um, he also used to uh, carry around a captured Mauser for uh, sharpshooting. Uh, just he liked that round. He liked it. He jokingly, somewhat called it his general smasher. Um, he was a Highlander. Uh, he was at Vimy Ridge, Passchendaele, Somme, Eep, uh, Arras, multiple, through multiple gas attacks. How that man made it out of there, I have no idea. Um, so he, he swore by that rifle and the techniques for using that rifle he installed onto his son, which is my grandfather, um, then passed on to my father and then to myself. So I like to think that it's kind of a generational thing. Um, we all, all of us can handle the infield expertly. Uh, it's been, knowledge has been passed down between, from bayonet fighting to field stripping to tips and tricks with the rifle that are ho over a hundred years old now. Um, it's tried and true. Again, uh, you know what it's capable of. The round's reliable. I've never had a malfunction with that rifle. Uh, the bolt did freeze on me one time, but again, going back from the um, lessons throughout history, just put that butt on the ground and give it a good kick in the bolt and knock the bolt, knock the ice out of the bolt and away you went, fired, no problem. Um, the thing's indestructible as far as I'm concerned. Um, shy of ruining the wood stock, but hasn't been ruined yet. Uh, so if you can hear a dog barking in the background, we've got uh, our St. Bernard Great Pyrenees out back. And there's uh, been some issues with the neighbor's dog, but that's besides the point. He's just uh, letting himself know. Him. Um, anyways, uh, they're reliable, bolt action, um, fairly cheap. You can find a sporterized Lee Enfield anywhere from 400 to about 800 bucks, depending on the condition. Um, uh, military original full wood stock, you're looking at 1200 bucks Canadian. Uh, I'm sure in the States you can probably find them cheaper. Uh, now, you could also go with other options, right? I just like the landfill because it's Commonwealth's rifle, right? Uh, I know I'm going to get a lot of flack from that from you guys down there in the States, but anyways. Uh, tried and true, but as I keep saying, I've never had a problem with it. I have no concern taking deer, moose, black bear with a 303. Uh, grizzly will probably have to put a couple shots into it. Uh, polar bear, that's why they chose the 303 Brit in the first place for in the Arctic and why they went to a 308, not something smaller as like the C7, the C8, R556, M16, A4, and the M4. Um, American nomenclature. Um, it's ha it's capable of handling all large game and medium game in Canada. Uh, so for a survival situation, having something with a wide spectrum. Now I wouldn't want to shoot a rabbit with the thing. You probably need nothing left with that rabbit. But um, you have other options, right? If you're employing something like that, you're you're not really going to be doing that with that rifle. I mean, you can, but it's not worth it. Waste the ammo. Um, and yes, ammunition is heavy. That is going to be a downfall. It is a 30 caliber. Uh, so carrying extra ammunition is going to be hard. With the uh, stripper clips, because it is designed to use uh, stripper clips, the box magazine holds 10 rounds. It is to be meant to be fed by five round stripper clips for the top. Um, you can remove the magazine and load the magazine separately. So you can carry extra magazines. Um, I do, when I go into the bush, I carry two extra Leonfield magazines. 
um, preloaded with eight rounds each. Um, I just like putting eight rounds instead of the ten. I swear and tear on the springs again. The magazines that I have personally owned are like eighty to ninety years old. Um, no problems with them. They work just fine. Never had a jam. Never had double feed. Never had failure feed. Nothing. Um, it's good tension on it. They just quality rifles and qual quality equipment for a reasonable price. That's honestly another big selling point of that rifle. Um, I also carry strip clips, um, five round strip clips. Mm, probably eight to 10 of those. So enough for anywhere between four mags or four to five magazines worth of ammunition. Um, it does weigh a lot, it weighs you down, but if you're just out using it as a brush gun, uh, just shooting stuff in the bush, uh, self-defense for against wildlife, whatever, never had to use it for that, so I normally just go out and carry it, used to carrying it with your systems, again, pressure test your systems. Um, the side pockets on the Condor 3-Day Assault Pack. Uh, I recently picked one of those up. I'm trying to replace some of my older uh, surplus Canadian Army gear with some newer stuff. I'm starting to have some failures with it. Um, again, the stuff was made in the 80s. It's plastic. It's fabric. It's going to be worn out. That's going on, what, 40 years old now? Um, over 40 years old. Almost 50 years old. Um, so it's a little kit. Uh, I've... Try, I'm starting to emulate uh, a little bit more of the um, British style of webbing. Um, I do still currently use the CF82 pattern web gear uh, that you can see in previous videos. So go ahead and check that out with my line line gear series of videos. Uh, uh, the Condor 3 Day Assault Pack rides nicer on your back while wearing that web gear. Um, then the 82 rock, the 82 rock kind of, you're not meant to wear the, the butt pack with it. Um, but I do cause I don't like taking things on and off all the time. It's just wear and tear on the kit first off and it's unnecessary. Um, I'll deal with a little bit of discomfort. It's fine. Um, but the, the three day assault pack does from Condor does sit nicer on your back with that. Anyways. Side track there. The side pockets on that do fit a decent amount of ammunition in them. That's kind of what I use them for. I have, uh, I'll go over it in another video sometime. Um, on one side I keep magazines, strip clips, and on the other side I do keep a uh, rifle cleaning kit, um, odds and ends in there. Uh, just kind of just evenly disperse the weight on both sides of the pack. That way you're not having more weight on this side or dra dragging the pack down, right? You're wearing tear in your spine. Um, you got to think about that when you're packing your kit. You got to make sure it's symmetrical on both sides. That way you're not injuring yourself while moving. And the the rifle, the Lee Enfield, again, as I was saying, you can have, you have no problem taking anything. Medium game is a reliable rifle. Uh, sorry for a little sidetrack there. Mine's kind of all over the place right now. I've got a lot going on. Uh, I am going to be trying to push out a video every day over the next couple of weeks. Um, I had something happen and just trying to work through it. So I'm trying to give this YouTube thing a stronger go here. Uh, so stay tuned. I'm sorry about the quality of this video, but uh, just trying to push things out here. Uh, stay tuned for the next couple of videos. I'm going to be going over some other things. Um, gardening, shotguns, uh, typical stuff, food storage. Um, what I do for water storage, uh, equipment, family preps. Uh, that's going to be a unique video all in itself. It's going to be a series. Um, seeing as to how it is September, it is the national month of prep. Um, I might start doing some daily videos. Got some pretty good ins inspiration from Bear Independent on that. Uh, I am going to be trying to do a topic, short short form topic, probably five ten minute video on 
uh, different topics just to graze the surface, see if there's interest. Uh, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you and, and talking to you in future videos. Leave a comment down below on anything that you'd like to see in the future. I'll leave it at that. Ontario Preparedness Bushcraft out.